Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and you're watching Trace TV. So for today's video, I really wanted to discuss Chris Brown, most people's problematic fave. And I really wanted to get on here because again, once again, Chris Brown is the topic of discussion. Because the topic of Chris Brown deserving grace and forgiveness has come up once again. And every single time it comes up, it kind of boils my blood because it irritates me how a lot of people oftentimes enable his behavior. All in all, it's okay to have problematic faves, but what I will say is that it's important to hold people accountable for their actions. Chris Brown has managed to always shine through all the bullshit and his fans have always stuck by him no matter what. Chris Brown throughout time has shown signs of growth, but as soon as he catches himself in a scandal, people begin to side-eye him, rightfully so, and he becomes the public versus Chris Brown fans, who, like I said, have a habit of enabling his lousy behavior. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm okay with separating the art from the artist because I believe it's like dealing with a teacher who doesn't really like you. If a teacher doesn't like you, you obviously expect them to still give you props for your effort and your work, correct? The issue with separating the art from the artist is that oftentimes a lot of people don't believe you can do that. I believe you can. I still like a lot of Chris Brown's music, but I still think he's kind of a piece of shit because of his active behavior and he has shown me numerous times that he has a nasty ego and a very bad attitude. But of course, people oftentimes enable him and say, oh, well, you know, we should stop punishing him. You know, who cares what he did to Rihanna? Technically, she hit him first. That may be very true because people simply just don't want to feel guilty for listening to Chris Brown. Just say you're biased and you like listening to Chris Brown and keep it moving. Chris Brown has some very shitty characteristics that makes me cringe and side eye his behavior. And I'm not blinded by his looks or his talent. I can care less about that. However, I do care about the fact that people oftentimes enable his behavior and always look past problematic behavior in spite of the shit he does. And I will say this, it's not just his fans, but it's also a lot of his peers in the entertainment industry. The fact that Chris is a part of the project. Why would they hate on him? Because Sean? of his past, right? I mean, and what like, about Sean Penn? They ever hate on his past in the movie? Wow. No, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Do you we feel like he needs to I mean he needs to be forgiven for like, you know, what he did? I mean, we are humans. And everybody deserves grace. Period. Yeah. I know you too, Bob. A few days ago, Chris Brown went on a random rant expressing his disappointment with society for glorifying the rapper Blueface and his new girlfriend, Krishan Rock, who we all know for some reason is this generation's it girl. For some reason, Krishan is heavily glorified for beating the fuck out of people and being a violent criminal. Krishan is literally a terrible person with problematic tendencies and she's in a toxic relationship with rapper Blueface and they're always being documented for doing the most problematic things. They even got their own damn reality show, which I find insane. Chris Brown took to Instagram and he decided to post the following. If y'all still hate me for a mistake I made as a 17 year old, please kiss my whole entire ass. First of all, you were 19. I'm fucking 33. I'm so tired of y'all running with the fucking narrative. You weird ass niggas are the same ones that tune in every week to see Blueface and Krishan beat the fuck out of each other in front of the world. But that's okay. It's entertainment. All y'all can suck my dick disrespectfully. Chris Brown feels like he should be shown grace. And to be honest, he does have a point when he addresses Blueface and Krishan. But I don't feel like he deserves grace because you made an adult mistake at 19 years old along with a heap of other mistakes and should be held to task for it and he keeps feeding into the negatives of the people who criticize him due to his past of abuse for not just Rihanna but to other people. I personally want to have a serious controversial discussion on why I think Chris Brown doesn't deserve as much grace as he thinks he does. The legendary Chris Brown rose to fame back in 2005 after his debut self-titled album took over the music industry with singles like Excuse Me Miss, Run It, and Give Me That, propelling the album to number two on the US Billboard Hot 100, and the album sold over 150,000 copies in just its first week. Chris Brown, aka CB, aka Charlie Brown, is only 16 years old. He's surrounded by beautiful girls and is already working on his second video following up his first hit, Run It. Now all this in his self-titled album Chris Brown hasn't even dropped yet. It hits stores November 29th. Chris Brown came up in the industry at 16 years old while he was still in the 10th grade and just in a matter of one year he became one of the biggest male pop stars in the world with many people comparing him to Usher and Michael Jackson. There were a plethora of teen boys who were excelling in the music industry for their good looks, charm, and purity. And back then little girls went crazy 
crazy over these teen boys who blew up and had these crazy top tier polished images. Chris Brown was with the times as music was starting to shift and Chris Brown became America's darling. Chris Brown was in major films. He was out here opening up for Beyonce when he first came up and anyone that grew up in that era knows how much of a big deal Chris Brown was. Almost every little girl that grew up in the early 2000s literally had a Chris Brown folder or had Chris Brown photos all over their binders. Chris Brown was just the it dude of the entire early 2000s. Like he had that whole era in a grip. Seeing him on 106 The Park, TRL, and so many reality shows and even TV shows and guest appearances on so many young kids shows. And we hadn't seen anything this impactful since really Michael Jackson. Chris Brown went from being a freshman in high school, living a regular life in Virginia, and all of a sudden, he went from a middle-class kid growing up in a middle-class family to having millions of fans after being discovered by a New York City talent scout. It seemed like, in our eyes, he could simply do no wrong. He was adorable, sweet, charming, laid back, and just seemed like he was going to be around for a long time. Men idolized him and young women dreamed to be with him. Chris Brown took the world by storm when he announced his relationship with pop and R&B sensation Rihanna, who was propelling to the top and came up around the same time Chris Brown did. They were for the most part the it couple and you couldn't go anywhere without hearing about them in the early 2000s. The pair initially began their relationship after Chris Brown co-wrote her Disturbia single and when Rihanna was at the height of her career. Everything sadly went downhill in the year 2009 when it was revealed by TMZ that Chris Brown had physically assaulted his girlfriend Rihanna. The Grammy Award nominee has just posted bail on criminal threat charges. Chris Brown is accused of assault and battery. Neither he nor his girlfriend, singer Rihanna, showed up at tonight's award show. KCAL 9 Soraya Fidel live now at the Mid Wilshire LAPD station with the breaking details. Chris Brown went from being the boy next door to quickly being the most hated and most vilified person on the planet. So much that he ended up going to jail for the assault and even went on national television apologizing for the assault because his fans were very disappointed in him, considering most of his fans are women. Chris Brown went on multiple live TV shows to express his sorrow and regret for assaulting his girlfriend. And of course, his moment of apologies became a huge moment in pop culture and became a massive laughing stock because so many people were making internet memes, parodies, and simply laughing at the fact that he apologized for beating Rihanna. If some crazy shit was being said, maybe she was screaming in his ear some crazy female shit like, oh, fuck all your friends, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> maybe that's why I sell more albums than you, motherfucker. Right? To be fair, she could have just been sitting there going, I need a tissue. Do you keep those in the glove box? Oh my God, I'll bring my out. I'll bring my out. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, man. Come on. Relax, man. Relax, man. Relax. Okay, I'm cool. All right? Yeah. Do you remember what you did to my face, Chris? I, but I told you I apologize. I don't want to hear no apology. Things got even worse considering this was the era of social media and when photos of Rihanna in the hospital resurfaced, all hell broke loose and you couldn't go anywhere without seeing Rihanna's face smashed up and you couldn't go anywhere without hearing about Chris's assault. Many social media comedians and stand-up comics famously mocked the incident, but most notably, Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany Haddish became America's most driest, unwashed chicken mixed with mayonnaise comedian for her dry ass, corny ass, coony ass comedy. For some reason, Tiffany Haddish is highly favored and highly rewarded and she's probably one of the most highest paid comedians in Hollywood right now. However, Tiffany Haddish actually went viral for mocking the incident weeks after it happened. Oh, hell no. I know damn well you, would you just call me baby? Asshole. I'm going with that bush, Rihanna. Poor loving ass. I thought we was moving forward. Open the door. Just leave, Chris. All right, have a nice life, Rihanna. I'm gone. Let me talk to you, tell you how it is You was thinking I was gonna say sorry Girl, not hardly, baby, I'm about to beat you Gotta whoop that ass like a dope baby Cause I can definitely show you things To have you saying I can't be this mean Look at you, on the floor, trying to run Girl, hell no I don't think you can run it, run it Girl, I dare you to run it, run it Oh uh, 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 uh. But I find it very funny how a lot of clips of Tiffany Haddish being problematic has resurfaced, but not this one, considering her and Rihanna are very well acquainted. 
And even though I know it's just comedy, I do find it kind of weird how her and Rihanna are very well acquainted. And it's a matter of time before this clip resurfaces because we all know Tiffany Haddish has a lot of problematic videos that have resurfaced throughout the years. But that's another video for another day. And Chris has made it clear throughout the years that Rihanna did swing on him first. But considering how biased the judicial system is against men and women inflicting violence on one another, Chris got most of the flack because he did do most of the damage and he basically beat Rihanna ass like a bongo drum. No matter where you were and what Chris did, people couldn't seem to let it go for years down the line. But his fans still stuck by him. Chris released his successful album that same year he pled guilty for beating Rihanna's ass like a bongo drum and he released his 2009 album, Graffiti and automatically people assumed it was about Rihanna. For some reason, you just couldn't stop hearing about the two of them. For some reason, they just automatically became attached to each other, even though they were broken up and all done with. Chris was rightfully charged with felony assault and making criminal threats on March 5th, and he pleaded guilty to a felony on June 22nd of that year and accepted a plea deal of community labor five years of probation and domestic violence counseling. Many media outlets even reported how Chris Brown was banned from multiple countries due to him beating Rihanna's ass like a bongo drum. Australia famously denied Chris Brown's work visa when he tried to enter the country for a booked event. So Chris Brown was heavily condemned. And to be honest, many people oftentimes argue that this was racially motivated because as we all know, if a black man does something that's ridiculously problematic, a lot of times the world will rightfully so hold him accountable. But when their white counterparts do it, it's usually seen as a slap on the wrist and no one really cares as much unless it's super super duper viral. More photos of the damage that Chris Brown did to Rihanna started to resurface and every damn celebrity and their mom a whole year later was asked to give their opinion. Hollywood is buzzing about the release of the latest photos of a beaten and battered Rihanna after her altercation with Chris Brown two years ago. At the Essence Women in Hollywood luncheon, the reaction was mixed. Um, wow. I mean, on the one hand, you know, I mean, Chris has gone through, you know, done everything that the courts asked him to do. Um, Rihanna, you know, Rihanna has, has talked about it. Um, this is really, you know, again, as someone who's been on the receiving end, uh, as you know, of, of violence against women, it's really up to the person, who, the, the, the survivor, to dictate um, how the situation plays out. It, it kind of shocks me all over again. So seeing that picture just reminds me, oh my gosh, how strong we have to be as women and how strong we have to be as a community to support each other, the good and the bad. So I think it's important to do that. I think that there is no excuse for violence, period. I saw those pictures earlier this morning. I think it's just, I think it's BS. You know, it's like, let's move on. She's moved on, he's moved on, let's all move on. Well, my mom was a victim of domestic violence growing up, so I, I, don't, I don't agree with domestic violence. Um, I feel that maybe for her, it's like, you know, I don't think people should be put, still putting the pictures up. It's gone to rest, they should let it heal and let the process go on. It's not fair to anybody involved in that situation to keep bringing it up. No one wants to remember that. Rihanna has moved on, Chris has moved on, and I think we all should just move on. And and. Basically, if you hear about abuse, tell it. Talk to your friends about it. That's the only thing we can do. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have growing pains. I think, to be honest with you, everybody's looking at Rihanna as the victim. I think both of them are. I think that Chris Brown is, is, is a victim as well. I mean, to be able to experience this in the media, that alone is... It's horrible. In spite of losing major endorsement deals and a lot of the media dragging Chris Brown any chance they got, a lot of his peers still had sympathy and empathy for him. But why exactly? Let's be honest for a second. When you're attractive and talented, people are oftentimes blinded by your glory that they can never hold you accountable for it. I like to use someone like R. Kelly, for example. When R. Kelly was doing all these messed up things in the late 90s, and he was also doing things such as marrying Aaliyah and taking his dick out and piss taking his dick out and pissing on women, you know, a lot of times a lot of celebrities actually defended him back in the day. And let's be real for a second. Why did a lot of people defend R. Kelly? Why did not only his fans stand by him, stood by him, but why did a big portion of the music industry still stand by R. Kelly? 
The truth is this. Just like Chris Brown, R. Kelly benefited from pretty privilege. R. Kelly is a very good looking man. Well, I mean, now he look a little rough. He look a little rough on the register. He look beat the fuck up. He look like a damn bulldog. He look a little crazy. But R. Kelly was a very good looking man and he could fucking sing his ass off. Like, um. <laughs> girl, you're in the kitchen cooking me a meal something makes me want to come in there and get a feel walk around in your t-shirt mm -hmm -hmm, on rutting past switching that mm, while i'm on the phone mm, cutting up tomatoes fruits and vegetables and potatoes girl you look so sexy while you're doing the damn thing that i want mm, in the kitchen over by the stove put you on the counter by the buttered rolls hands on the table on your tippy toes we'll be making love like the restaurant was called <clears throat> you see what i mean here like there's a reason why a lot of times a lot of our favorite entertainers don't necessarily get condemned by their peers everyone was quick with a well you know we should move on and get over how why why I just never understood that, especially because that situation was still so fresh. Chris was still doing probation and still going through court just for that whole situation. As we all know, Chris Brown's rebel image benefited him, yes, but it also harmed him in the long run because his debacle of Rihanna led to countless more legal issues because Chris Brown went down the path of crime in the late 2010s, as we all know. He dealt with a massive amount of drug addiction temper tantrums, and public disputes with anyone that even questioned his character. It's a big deal to me now as far as that situation. Mm -hmm. I think I'm past that in my life, and I think today is the album day, so that's what I'm focused on. So everybody go get that out. Have you been able to? How have you been able to? I've been that? focusing on his album, you know? I think this, this album is what, you know, I, I want people to hear and want people to really get into. So definitely this album is what I want them to talk about, and not the type of stuff that happened two years ago. A window in Brown's dressing room was smashed, and that caused shattered glass to fall onto the street below in Times Square. Brown then reportedly blew off his next scheduled performance at ABC, ripped off his shirt, and left the building. Rihanna has made it clear that she has forgiven Chris Brown, yes, and she has moved on, and she has sealed that chapter in her life, and she's over it. Right now, Rihanna has two children, and she's basically happily dating ASAP Rocky, and she's running her billion-dollar empire, so she's obviously obviously unbothered and doing her thing but getting off of that topic is chris brown really worthy of sympathy let's move on to a different subject for example did we forget about the whole colorism debacle that has persistently occurred throughout the years of chris brown allegedly being accused of not letting women to a section and he's allegedly said that he doesn't want dark girls in his section Back in 2019, Chris Brown released an album that nobody listened to and he released a single that nobody remembers. And back in 2019, Chris Brown said in one of his new singles that he only likes the black bitches with the nice hair. And of course that did stir some controversy and people took that to heart. Especially his main fan base who is usually black women. Now initially it was dusted off. But the blogs reported on it and all the backlash she got on Twitter and a famous influencer by the name of Tokyo Vanity who's known for being on Love and Hip Hop and being a rapper also commented under the blog post saying that this is nothing new and that he's known for not letting black women into his section. So, so this basically society shouldn't even be surprised that he said that. Instead of apologizing and taking ownership or just ignoring the backlash, Chris Brown went on a massive rant, blasting Tokyo Vanity, calling her ugly, and making fun of the way she looks, to which she then later responded. Okay, all that talking about, can you take me out and all that, like, bitch, that shit not funny. Second of all, bitch, I'm not even your type, bitch, you into things of, you know, lighter complexion, you know, coke, heroin, molly, acid, embalming fluid, cigarettes, I'm just saying, Puerto Rican women, white women, Asian women, you know, and that's all fine because that's your preference and we are entitled to a preference. Bitch, all I'm doing is calling it like I see it. When we was in the club in Miami and when we was in the club in LA, bitch, in your section, your rules was no dark because you wouldn't let my homegirl in in LA, but you let all her friends in, and in Miami, you wouldn't let my other homegirl in, but you let all her friends in, but y'all was talking about no dark skin women. All I'm saying is like a gangster, how you feel? Stand on that shit because me, however I feel about anything, I'ma stand on it ten toes. 
And of course, Chris Brown responded to the backlash, calling people dummies, and he posted a screenshot of his song with Sean Pa titled Brown Skin Girls, basically making it clear that he's paid hom- homage to dark skinned women before. And then it led to Chris Brown going back and forth in his comment section by saying things such as, weird ass angry people, sincerely from the bottom of my balls, I don't give a fuck about y'all negative booty face ass bitches. I'm start, I'm going to start giving away free lace fronts for all you weird females with the skid row edges and low self esteem. Aside from that, hop off these nuts. Okay, challenge. For all the angry uglies that's mad at what I said, post a picture of what you look like. Please, I'm begging you, so we can end this shit once and for all. Ugh. Ooh, y'all ain't sending no pictures in. Ooh, feel dumb, don't you? And the issue hasn't stopped. It allegedly still continues. I got this one. I was 26 years old, standing in line at a very exclusive Los Angeles club. I live in Los Angeles, and um, I was with two two light skinned girls and one white girl. And um, we're walking into the club, and a very famous R&B singer, okay, walked up to me and looked at my girl, said, "You can get in, you can get in, but no darkies." I, just, I kept walking because I was like, "Huh?" He's like, "I said no darkies," and I was literally escorted off the property um let's just say in that particular day my dating preferences completely change we were supposed to go and see chris brown we got there there was thousands of girls lining up there like thousands of girls and they're not getting in and we were supposed to be on the vip guest list i'll give you guys a don't, 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 don't go guys. to fucking what's it called proud proud lady, proud, proud whatever they forgot to tell us black girls ain't allowed they said no black girls allowed if chris brown was built like CeeLo green's ass and looking like kodak black he wouldn't even be here today and i will admit to be honest most of these women who did call him out for colorism and not allowing him in a section most of them clearly have nothing to lie about and a lot of these women have probably exaggerated their stories because again a lot of us weren't there and there isn't any substantial evidence and truth be told i'm disgusted with any woman that tries to get into a section in spite of hearing all the colorism allegations because why go somewhere where you're not wanted it's truly pathetic because most of these women who are so desperate to get into these rappers and celebrity sections are typically looking for cool points and social validation all while sleeping on a slice of bread in their fucking shoebox apartments full of roaches. And most of these women literally get none of my sympathy. But this alone is a good example why I think Chris Brown and his peers using the racism card is complete bullshit. But moving on to a different topic, let's scale back a little bit and talk about Chris Brown's toxic relationship with Karuchi. Because it seems like many people usually forget that she and her friends accused Chris Brown of domestic violence. But let's discuss that. In early 2014, Chris Brown became a huge topic of discussion due to his first ever public and highly publicized relationship after Rihanna. And that's when we were introduced to Karuchi Tran to the mainstream world. The two had previously dated in the past back in 2011 and there is photos and videos of them being out together. But they were pretty much on and off due to Chris Brown's personal life, his career, and all the backlash she had previously received considering she started dating Chris Brown after the whole Rihanna debacle. But once he announced Karuchi as his official girlfriend in 2014 and they rekindled after taking a break for several years, all hell broke loose. And she was accused of being an opportunist by the public and she faced tons of backlash because one she's dating somebody who has been accused of domestic violence she faced a lot of cyberbullying from rihanna's dirty ass navy fan base and of course people still to this day don't really care for her very much because she was pretty much chris brown's rebound after dating rihanna and he went back and forth with both of them during the late 2010s and went around with multiple women during that time chris still stood by karuchi and karuchi built a lucrative platform because chris gave her one after years of being in a relationship, they parted ways when it was discovered that Chris Brown repeatedly cheated on her and he even got another woman pregnant in the midst of their relationship. Now, I'm pretty sure most of y'all remember that. Granted, that's none of our business that he went around cheating on her and he got another woman pregnant. But did people just forget about the fact that Chris Brown was allegedly abusive towards Karuchi? Did we just forget about the fact that she came out and said that Chris Brown was severely abusive and allegedly physically assaulted her? Did we just automatically forget that? 
See, this is why a lot of times I side eye anyone that says that we should just move on and let it go when it comes to Chris Brown's problematic past. Although Chris Brown and Carucci separated because of his unfaithful ways and him swinging back from Rihanna to Carucci throughout the years, Chris announced to the world in 2014 that he and Carucci would be going their separate ways and even made it clear during a performance that he was single and ready to mingle. How many single ladies we got in here tonight? I'm single too. Fuck that bitch. Let's do it. But back in the spring of 2015, multiple reports indicated that Chris Brown followed his ex-girlfriend Karuchi Tran and began stalking and harassing her after she persistently kept trying to ignore him and close that chapter in her life. Which is weird because Chris Brown made it very clear that he was calling it quits and moving on. Things escalated when Karuchi went out with her friend to a Los Angeles nightclub called Playhouse and Chris Brown randomly and purposely booked a table alongside hers just so he could harass her because she kept ignoring his calls and messages. Are you for Yeah. Back up, back up, back up. All right, bro, no problem. All right, Chris. You guys back or what? Like seeing you happy, yo. Either way. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let him out, let him out, let him out, let him out, let him out. Don't get in the way, don't get in the way. Thank you guys. He kept trying to force a conversation with her, but clearly she wasn't having it. Karuchi then left the club after getting annoyed, and Chris Brown was filmed by TMZ, and he even went as far as shoving his way through her friends and got into her car. Allegedly, a shouting match did ensue, which prompted Karuchi to drop Chris Brown off at a friend's house, and she continued on her way going back home. It was alleged that Chris Brown showed up to her home literally hours later at 3 a.m. demanding that Karuchi speak to him and Karuchi refused, obviously, and later went to a diner to enjoy breakfast. Chris, of course, followed her to that diner and refused to leave her alone while she tried to enjoy her meal. Karuchi then went on the Ayana Fix My Life show to address her toxic relationship with Chris Brown and this was the first time she ever went on to clear her name because many people made a lot of funny jokes and mocked the fact that she was being followed because people said the following. They were saying things such as, oh, well, I would love for Chris Brown to be obsessed with me and I would love for Chris Brown to stalk and harass me. These were things that were said by many of his toxic fans that are blinded by his looks and his talent. Many people don't like Karuchi because they feel like she's an opportunist because anytime she's addressed by paparazzi or anytime something happens, she's always going on Twitter entertaining the nonsense. Chris Brown did leave Karuchi alone for a little bit but the following years, in 2017, literally two years later, the abuse still continued. Anytime Karuchi would post photos of herself with other men, Chris Brown would always say nasty things and even go as far as calling Karuchi out of her name. Like when she posted a selfie of her in a bikini, he literally commented, Thirst Trap 101, smiley face, continue to be a lady beautiful, you are perfect, don't let the thought form from anger. And the blogs antagonized it even more. When the rapper The Game randomly followed Karuchi, the Shade Room decided to repost it right along with other blogs, and Chris Brown had the nerve to comment, someone must have something they need to promote. It's sad that people need gimmicks to maintain fame. All pub is good pub, I guess. Then that same year in 2017, Soldier Boy called out Chris Brown by saying, Chris Brown just called me and said he want to fight me because I liked Karuchi's picture on Instagram. This nigga a bitch. And then he went on calling Chris Brown a cokehead. Then Karuchi finally went public with her boyfriend, Victor Cruz, and out of nowhere, Chris Brown decides to go to Victor Cruz's Instagram, not Karuchi's, but her, but Karuchi's boyfriend's Instagram, and he decided to troll Victor Cruz by saying that Victor Cruz needs to get a stylist and she needs to upgrade because Victor Cruz definitely is an upgrade compared to who he is. And part of why he was always dragging Karuchi on the internet every chance he got was because Karuchi ate a lot off of his name. On top of that, 
There was also a point where Chris Brown even decided to go crazy on Instagram because he hated the fact that Karuchi's name was always intertwined with his in the media. Anytime Karuchi did an interview, his name would always get bought up, and it infuriated him. Which is ironic, because Chris Brown made it clear when he started dating Karuchi that he's the one that actually wanted to help put her on. And this is what I call love bombing, a narcissistic person that you date who counts favors and throws it in your face all in the end. As yeah. far as it's, I wish it was, it could be better because of, you know, obvious reasons. But, you know, I think it's better to see her happy and, you know, successful in what she does. And I think hopefully her, her being able to experience everything she's experienced with me over the years and get, you know, the ex just even exposure because at the end of the day it's not a, for her to, to be put on or, mm -hmm. or become famous but I like taking care of the people that, I, that I can say I love so then the plot thickens in Karuchi's 2017 year when things got more hectic and more popping for her career she ended up taking on Jacob York as her manager and Chris Brown was not happy about that at all this was a big deal for Karuchi because Jacob York only manages the most massive stars in the world so Chris Brown took to social media and he put this under Karuchi's post saying, Okay, Miss Tran, I wish you the most successful career ever, but I promise you this, once this talent you have starts to simmer, so will everyone else, including Jacob. All your famous friends you know? How? 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 Okay, so to end this petty game that's going to allow you to book more club appearances and movies that go straight to DVD, I'll leave you this. And he left her a heart. He basically responded to her after she basically told him on Twitter and on Instagram to get a life and focus on his daughter. Then in early February of 2017, things got a little fucked up. Chris Brown posted a clip of him making it clear that if the woman he loves doesn't love him back, then he's going to make her life a living hell. Ladies, y'all ever dealt with a nigga that just be like blowing y'all shit up, hopping gates, stalking the fuck out, you getting on your nerves? Oh shit. I'm one of them niggas. If I love you, bitch, ain't nobody gonna have you. Fuck that. I'm tearing up everything, nigga. If I love you, bitch, ain't nobody gonna have you. I'm gonna make you miserable. I'm gonna chase that nigga out. I'm gonna chase your ass around. Following that creepy sentiment, Chris Brown was served in Houston, Texas after an event with a permanent restraining order issued by Karuchi because Karuchi finally decided to stop protecting him and Karuchi decided to go to law enforcement to make it very clear that she didn't feel safe around him. In court documents filed by Karuchi, she claimed that Chris Brown punched her in her stomach twice and even pushed her down the stairs during past incidents and even threatened to kill her earlier in that same month and even said to multiple people that he was going to kill her. The police report written by Karuchi that was later leaked to the media states, around the second week of February, he told me and a few people that he was going to kill me. And he said, if he can't have me, then no one else can have me. Karuchi also made it very clear that Chris even got very, very specific in his threats. Reportedly alleging in the legal filing that Chris Brown threatened to shoot her. She also stated that Chris allegedly also beat her and Chris even went as far as throwing a drink on one of her friends after one of her friends tried to stand up to him. As you can see in documents obtained by Straight From The A, she made it very clear on the dotted line that he quote unquote punched me twice and punched me downstairs. Chris Brown made it his business to go to Instagram to address the restraining order and address the heinous allegations because again, this was another allegation by another woman he was very close with who made it clear that she was physically assaulted by Chris Brown. So you already know Chris Brown had to address this. Chris Brown said a lot and got a lot off his chest, but he basically said that people are trying to open up old wounds and he won't allow it. And he also said if anything, he needs a restraining order against Karuchi and her abusive manager who has been harassing him ever since he's been representing Karuchi. So all in all, Chris Brown denied it and his fans believed him. On top of that, Karuchi realistically had no evidence other than text messages revealing that he was truly going to kill her, which for some reason to his fans wasn't really enough. Because again, there was no evidence of her being physically assaulted. Karuchi was later granted her restraining order and Chris Brown was ordered to be nowhere inside of Karuchi. Again, Karuchi did get her restraining order because she did have private text messages of Chris Brown threatening her life. She just didn't have evidence of him physically assaulting her. However, one of Karuchi's friends in Los Angeles did confirm her story. The singer and songwriter Kay Cola did allege this on Twitter. I used to cry over that situation, hearing her screaming at the top of her lungs because I am also a victim of domestic violence. Some of y'all just make me sick to my stomach talking about Karuchi's line. I've heard him beating her myself. I even called the police. 
And there are situations as of now where women have been known to lie on Chris Brown and also make horrible accusations and automatically and mysteriously disappear, drop the charges, or they're usually found out to be heinous liars who do this to other celebrities. Chris Brown even gave the media hell last year when he went on his Instagram story going on a crazy rant like he usually does when it was revealed that one of his so-called victims actually lied on him. And he even followed it up with a statement on how he feels like the media should channel all this energy into his art and not his bad boy image. But I mean, can you really blame him though? Chris Brown isn't really known for being the most upstanding citizen. And if people are questioning your character at every blockade, you have to assert at, at some point, at a certain point, look in the mirror. But at a certain point, we have to kind of hold him accountable for all the problematic energy that he has put out in the past. Roughly around four months ago, Chris Brown and his fans dragged the AMAs after he publicly announced and made it very clear. Chris Brown was initially booked by the AMAs to do a tribute to Michael Jackson, roughly around five to six months ago, and he was booked alongside Sierra. This would have been a big deal for both of them because MJ is a huge inspiration for Chris Brown and Sierra. Sadly, the opportunity was swept away from Chris Brown days prior to the show. But it has been speculated that both artists have problematic images, and that's the alleged reason why it was canceled. Allegedly. But things really got a little bit weird when Chris Brown decided not to show up to the AMAs because he was nominated and even won an award, and Kelly Rowland had a silence, an oddly booing crowd. Now Chris Brown is not here tonight, so I'm accepting this award on his behalf. Excuse me, ch chill out. But I want to tell Chris thank you so much for making great R&B music. And I want to tell him thank you for being an incredible performer. I'll take this award, bring it to you. I love you. Congratulations. And congratulations to all the- But of course, I got to talk about the recent stuff that happened that made me really want to do this video. Now recently, Chris Brown took to his story to post a lot of the most popular and prominent white entertainers who have done horrific things in terms of domestic violence, rape, and pedophilia, but yet none of them are ever condemned or held accountable to the same extent that Chris Brown is. And to be honest with you, I agree, he does have a point with that. Recently, and just a few weeks ago, Chloe Bailey, Beyonce's protege, and she announced one of her lead singles will be featuring Chris Brown. Most people were thrilled and excited because Chris kills every R&B feature that he's on. Because again, Chris is a musical genius. But there were a few token people who went as far as condemning Chloe for working with Chris Brown due to his past of disrespecting black women. And most notably, one of the people who called him out who went viral for it was former member of 3OW and former Cheetah Girl, Keely Williams. Keely Williams tweeted the following. Quoting Chloe's tweet, she tweeted, let him come out with his own record. So genius, so captivating that it makes us all forget he beats women. He can't, so he won't. So what does he do? He slowly keeps back into the mainstream by getting small nods for features of black women's merit, black women who are more talented, more worthy, but give him the okay. I'm swatting the fucking air right now. Garbage. To which Chris Brown was not having it, after this went viral and he went on a massive rant and a massive cyberbullying parade, dragging Keely, calling her ugly, calling her untalented, and dragging going in on her and saying that she's just mad because her career hasn't gone anywhere. So yeah, don't get me wrong, I get why Chris Brown did that because if you're going to put out a certain energy, you better be ready for that to come back to you times three. But I will say that Keely did have a point. However, she's the wrong messenger because let's not forget, she herself was also accused of colorism and she herself is also not the best messenger. Chris Brown also used it as an opportunity to address the fact, where are the cancel culture with these white artists that date underage women, beat the fuck out of their wives, giving bitches AIDS? Oh, that's right, they're your buddies. No more fake love for me. Stay out of my way or get ran over. Simple as that. None of you and I mean none of you niggas can fuck with me. And then he went on to post multiple white artists on his story and showing their criminal background and how a lot of them are also horrible people but never get held to task as much as he does, which is a good point. But that's not always the case because loads of people can get held accountable for their actions. It, I get the notion of being black and oftentimes people try to hold you accountable because the media can be racist, but let's also address the fact that there are tons of people who have also beat their wives or have also been accused of assault and they're all black. Let's address Mike Tyson, who's been accused of domestic violence, Gary Dorden, Terrence Howard, John Singleton, multiple people who have been accused of assault, like fabulous, but yet, 
for some reason, you're always bought up into the media. It has nothing to do just because you're talented and you're black. A lot of it has to do with the fact that you have a nasty attitude and you have done problematic things throughout the years. People have a reason to interrogate and condemn your character. And are these black people that are calling you out for being problematic also racist? Are they also prejudiced? These people who say, y'all should just let it go. Y'all should just let it go. These are the hypocrites. These are the people who say you can't separate the art from the artist because they themselves believe that we should hold the artists accountable and cancel people because they themselves have canceled artists. But they can't cancel their faves because those are their faves. You know, those are the people who are typically biased. If you can't separate the art from the artist, more than likely, you yourself are biased because a lot of our faves are incredibly problematic. Do I really need to go on a list or a rant or a tangent of all the, all the problematic people that have done some crazy and odd and salacious and odd and questionable things? A lot of people that we enjoy have done some problematic things. It is what it is. But do you enjoy their work and their content? Enjoy it. But hold them accountable for their actions. Pretty privilege and talent plays a very big role on why people have been blinded by their loyalty for Chris Brown and refuse to hold him accountable in spite of all the things he's done, again, throughout all the years and the whole Rihanna debacle. So, truth be told, the answer is no. People don't have to show Chris Brown any grace, even if there are a lot of racist and dark forces trying to get rid of him and are still trying to get rid of him and eradicate many people. Hold people accountable for their actions because again, you put them in a position where they can grow and become the best version of themselves. And you should also hold yourself accountable for things that you do as well because that's how growth comes about. But I'll that for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how you feel about Chris Brown deserving grace and all these celebrities trying to promote the fact that we should give him grace because he's Chris Brown. And let me know what you guys overall thought about this video. Please be sure to join, join my Patreon. It's as low as $2. Give me a thoughts in the comments down below. Please follow me on Instagram. And yeah, that's that. Enjoy the music. Choice out this bitch. Uh, here we go. Album on the way, y'all. Mm. I hope life treats you kind And I hope you have all you dreamed of And I'm wishing you joy and happiness Above all this I wish you Love and I will always love you. And I will always love you. And I Thank you. That's all you guys get for free. Tell me what song I should sing next. Album on the way. Y'all tell Beyonce she got competition.